Israeli airstrikes on an area near Rafah. Israel's national security advisor, Zachi Hanegbi, said Wednesday that he expected Israel's military operations in Gaza to continue through at least the end of the year. Just heard the Israeli representative for the United Nations Security Council plead his case, and he said that this could be all over. Well, not according to your national security advisor, who dismissed that idea that the war would come to an end. We expect another seven months of combat, he said, in order to shore up our achievement and realize what we define as the destruction of Hamas and Islamic Jihad's military and governing capabilities. Of course, Hamas and Islamic Jihad's military and governing capabilities is a euphemism for the civilian society of Palestine. Israeli officials have told the public to expect a protracted campaign that would progress in phases toward lower intensity fighting. Mr. Hanegbi's assessment, however, appeared to be at odds with earlier projections by Satan, who said in April that the country was on the brink of victory in its war against Hamas. The world court has ordered Israel to rein in its offensive, rein it in. The genocide in Biden administration has expressed frustration with the lack of a clear Israeli endgame for post-war Gaza. I love the use of conflagration. It sparked a conflagration. Um, it blew up babies. But you remember, it's the Israeli bombardment that sparked the conflagration, and the conflagration killed 45 people. We gotta make that distinction clear. Just as the spokesperson for the Israeli government said at the United Nations Security Council earlier today, it's not their fault. If only Hamas had not been storing munitions, then this bombardment wouldn't have killed so many people. It's really Hamas's fault. This is the human shield defense at work. The Israeli military said the airstrike had targeted two Hamas commanders and that it was looking into what could have caused the blaze. Of course, I was just on Twitter, formerly known as X. It was an interesting thread. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, so he says, within nine hours and 44 minutes, everyone inside the blue box would be incinerated. I don't know where this blue box is. There's a few blue boxes. Here's a, another satellite image of Rafa. Car number one, look, there it is. White SUV. Car number two, white hatchback, right over here. Okay, car number three, black minivan. Again here, a short while later. So this is where the video is being taken, and it's looking onward over here. The blue oval is the large banner that reads Kuwait Peace Camp 1, okay? Car 1, 2, 3, red, green, yellow. Blue is the Kuwait Camp sign 1. Left image is the Israeli drone footage. Targets of the strike were right here. Right image is the satellite photo from 11 a.m. the day of the massacre. So here's the Israeli drone footage. Here's the targets of the strike. The red, green, and yellow are the cars. Blue is the Kuwait camp sign. Right image is the satellite photo from 11 a.m. Two strikes, two fire. You can see two bright spots on infrared drone camera. Israel claims their 17 grams of explosives couldn't have caused those fires. Our ammunition could not have ignited a fire of this size, Daniel Hagari says. Let's say no fire happened. This is the interesting point. How many people would have died in those two tents? 20 to 25 civilians for two targets, even without what New York Times calls a conflagration. 20 to 25 people would have been killed for two targets. Israel dropped two GBU-39 small diameter bombs, which have a blast radius of 26 feet. There you go. Even with that one tent being targeted, you're actually targeting four or five other ones. Final result, look at it. These bombs did exactly what they were meant to do. This is the area where launcher is seen in the IDF imagery. That's what they're trying to claim is what set off when it's well off to the side, not anywhere near the actual encampments. Israel doesn't target civilians. Israel targets everyone and doesn't care. The U.S. Secretary of State said the incident demonstrated the dangers and challenges of waging war in a crowded area where Hamas is embedded with a civilian population. And he reiterated the Biden administration's criticism that Israel has not laid the groundwork for Gaza's governance and security after the war. I think this underscores the imperative of having a plan for the day after because in the absence of a plan for the day after, there won't be a day after, Mr. Blinken told reporters on a trip to Moldova. If not, Hamas will be left in charge, which is unacceptable, or if not, we'll have chaos, lawlessness, and a vacuum, as opposed to what we have right now, which is chaos, lawlessness, and a vacuum. Can you imagine how much death and destruction there'd be if we left Hamas in charge? Imagine what would happen if 
we left them in charge, though. Think about all the death and destruction. Think about all the chaos and lawlessness. If we have left Hamas in charge, it might devolve into the worst humanitarian crisis on Earth. Oh, wait, we're already there? Oops. At least 290 Israeli soldiers have been killed in Gaza and over 3,600 wounded since the ground invasion began in late October, according to military statistics. The military said another three soldiers were killed and three more seriously wounded. I am all bricked up right now after reading that on Tuesday in Rafah, where Israeli forces have been advancing in a long-anticipated assault. Look at that. How does anyone in their right mind look at pictures like this? and believe that this right here is what we in the West should be scared of. Literally piles and piles and piles upon piles of rubble. How does anyone look at this picture and look at the pictures coming out of Gaza and think that Hamas is posing a threat? How does anyone think that when the defense minister in the days after October 7th tells everyone in the world that they are going to shut off their food, water, and electricity and fuel and treat them as if they are human animals in addition to acknowledging that there is no distinction between civilians and militants in Gaza, essentially saying that every human life is a military objective. And indeed, that is what has exactly happened. As has been pointed out, I've never heard of an oppressed people being able to turn off the food, water, electricity, and fuel of their oppressors. So make that make sense. And if you do materially have the power, as you say you do, to cut off the food, the water, the electricity, and the fuel, does that make you oppressed? Does that mean that you are still oppressed? Or does that not make you materially in power? So therefore, you're not oppressed rest, even by your own admission. This doesn't take much thought to see what's happening. Over one million Gazans have fled the city in the face of onslaught. According to the United Nations, Israel has called the operation essential to take out Hamas forces a raid in the city. They're a raid in the city. That, who wrote this? I think somebody from the IDF. While the Biden administration and human rights groups have voiced concern over the plight of the civilians who had sought shelter there, over 36K Palestinians have been killed since the Hamas-led surprise attack. I think they've just stuck on this number because literally there's no way to tally the dead at this point. So they can't they can't even substantiate any of these figures anymore. There's just so much death that they, it's just been capped at 36. That's the last time we've been able to keep track of the number. Yeah, it was like 36K. I mean, I remember it's been 30,000 for months. The same idea of killing reporters and killing journalists. Don't let the story get out. So if you kill off every apparatus or entity that is capable of carrying out these tasks, then you can suppress the information. And let's not forget, just to remind everyone, that Israel started a war by bombing a Palestinian children's hospital in 1982. That was five years before Hamas was even chartered. They started a war with Lebanon in 1982 and they bombed a Palestinian children's hospital to start it and they killed scores of people, something like 60 people, including children and women. And this idea that Hamas embeds itself in hospitals, well, they have to be one of the dumbest to go hide in the very place is Israel's number one target. That makes no sense. It only makes sense if you believe that October 7th is year zero. It all started there. There was peace and quiet, these sort of radical extremists as they call them. These groups are fertilized, cultivated in the soil of repression. Nobody just picks up guns without trying other things first, as these are extreme forms of resistance because they need to be. Dixon, border Cambodian genocide. Clinton sent cruise missiles to Sudan, people died. Obama gave the orders to do drone strikes.